Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, good morning everyone. So I'll begin. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri course. We're in Unit 1 and this is Lesson 7. Lesson 7 entitled Varnashram Dharma, a support to Krishna Consciousness. Just to review what we covered last week, we related the appearance of Krishna to the establishing of Dharma, right? Lord Krishna comes to re-establish, to establish Dharma. Yadaya Dahi Dharmasya, right? Thanatan Dharma, the eternal religion. And identified the ultimate principle of Dharma as surrender to Krishna. Secondly, discussed under what circumstances following Varnashram Dharma is necessary. Who remembers? Who can tell me under what circumstances is following Varnashram necessary? Radhika Mataji? Uh, uh, I'm somehow not. Uh, we have to follow Varnashram Dharma under all circumstances because uh, it is. It is what guides and it is a stepping stone to human civilization and it is, it is important to uh, follow Varnashram Dharma. Yes, but there's, there was a, a criterion also, who, who follows and who doesn't. There are some people, they don't need to follow Varnashram. Right? Who is that? Uh, one who has... Uh, who's transcended the material platform as, and is surrendered to Krishna and is following the path of bhakti, need not then follow the Varnashram Dharma. Right. A liberated soul doesn't have to follow. If someone's a liberated soul. Okay, what qualifications are required for beginning the practice of Krishna consciousness? Someone? No, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, they, in actual, there is no qualification needed uh, to start the practice of Krishna Consciousness because anyone can start but uh, one should be at the platform of a human being, means uh, he should follow the Varnashram Dharm and uh, uh, civilized human, he should be a civilized human being, first of all. Well, they may not be civilized but they, they can become civilized by practicing mm -hmm. Krishna Consciousness. The, the main qualification, I think, they need the mercy of a devotee. Yes, they need to get the mercy of a devotee to bring them in. But actually, as you say, anybody can follow. All right, what about the results of following Varnashram Dharma? 
with the results of sanatana dharma. Who would like to comment on this? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, the success of humble obeisances, all those who should propound. In our Shrimad Karma, the results are temporary. Uh, Sanatana Karma results are eternal. And if we gain 1%, we will start from the 2%. Yes, very good. Right. Sanatana Dharma, you never lose the benefit. All right, any other comment? Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. He's on the material platform and Sanatan Dharma is on the spiritual platform. Okay, yes, good. And, and the, Krishna is the center in Sanatan Dharma and Varnashram Dharma, uh, Krishna is not a center of sense gratification, which are here. Material desires to fulfill, we follow the Varnashram. Well, I don't know about that so much, not everyone. Varnashram Dharma is it, not every attached. Okay. All right, let's go ahead. Last one. Explained how the practice of Krishna consciousness is transcendental to Varnashram Dharma. Yes, Prabhu, would you like to comment on that? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Like the uh, uh, Practice of Krishna consciousness is transcendental. So we are, if we are following Krishna consciousness, so we are not um, forced to follow Varnashram Dharma because uh, if we have a thousand rupees, no ten rupees, no uh, value is already there in thousand rupees. So if we are following Krishna consciousness, Varnashram Dharma is automatically followed in that. There is no separate need to practice that. But we do need to follow. We need, we we can't disregard Varnashram Dharma. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya was very careful the duties of a sannyasi. Although he's on the highest spiritual platform of Krishna consciousness, still he is very careful to follow the duties of Varnashram. Yes, Maharaj. Like you want to establish a principle otherwise you won't follow that. That's why Someone else like to comment? Why is Krishna consciousness transcendental to Varnashram Dharma? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanvat Pranam. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, you explained that Sanatan Dharma is uh, permanent and uh, Varnashram Dharma is temporary. Although we can, on the basis of uh, Varnashram Dharma only, by following the Varnashram Dharma, we can achieve spiritual uh, platform, but uh, still Varnashram Dharma is temporary and uh, spiritual, uh, sorry, this um, Sanatan Dharma is eternal. Okay. Yes. There's another, another point. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Very much. Sorry. Um, because also it, it, it doesn't depend on uh, any varna or any ashram, it is transcendent. Right, that's a, I think that's the main point. The Krishna consciousness doesn't depend on any varna or ashram. Right, from it's any, open to anyone. From any position, right, it's open to everyone. So Krishna consciousness is transcendental to varna ashram dharma. Thank you. Okay, very good. We'll go ahead. Uh, let me see. Okay, so here we see Krishna defeats Arjuna's argument. You, you remember we heard how there were four reasons why Arjuna didn't want to fight. And one by one, these reasons were all defeated by Lord Krishna. Right? His compassion was defeated by giving him the knowledge of the soul, the difference between the body and the soul, and the eternal nature of the soul. And then Arjuna's desire, he, Arjuna was saying, there will be no enjoyment, I won't enjoy. But Krishna defeated that by presenting the teachings of Karma Kanda, right? That actually, if Arjuna doesn't fight, then he won't enjoy, but if he does fight, then he will enjoy. 
and then sinful reactions were defeated when Lord Krishna spoke about buddhi yoga or as it's more commonly called karma yoga. So this was all described in the second chapter. If we, if, when one performs one's duty, remember buddhi yoga or karma yoga means to act according to one's duty detached from the results. So when we're detached from the results and we're performing our duty, then there's no sinful reactions. Are you all able to see the screen okay? The slides? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so long as you're able to see the slides. Okay, good. And then, in the third chapter, which we haven't really gone over yet, but we will be coming to it, we, we will hear about how Arjuna's argument about the destruction of the dynasty was defeated by the teachings of Karma Yoga. Arjuna was worried that the dynasty would be destroyed, right? How, what were the different stages of the destruction of the dynasty? Who remembers? First of all, what happens? If Arjuna fights? Sorry? First, first thing, the first stage in the destruction? The elders from the family dies. Right, the elders from the family die. And then? Then the family becomes irreligious. Yes. And then? Um, then women become polluted. Uh-huh. And then? Give rise to unwanted progeny. And then? Yes. And finally? Community projects and family welfare activities. Right. Thank you. Right. So these are the different stages. And we will hear how by karma yoga, this can be avoided by performing one's duty in a detached manner. Arjuna was saying if he fights, then he thought it was all going to be bad. But Krishna is saying, no, if you fight, we'll be actually good. We'll avoid all these things. So Varnashram Dharma, an example for society in general. Would someone like to read, please? I can read, Maharaj. Please. Varnashram Dharma, an example, of, example for society in general. A self-realized man has no purpose to fulfill in the discharge of his prescribed duties, nor has he any reason not to perform such work. Therefore, just for the sake of educating, the people in general, you should perform your work. Bhagavad Gita 3.18 to 20. So, what is what is being described here? What principle is being described here? What kind of work or yoga is being described here? That's Karma Yoga Maharaj? Yes, right. This is Karma Yoga detached work, right? He's doing his duty, the discharge of his prescribed duty, but he has no purpose. He's not interested in the result. So detached work. And why is he doing it? For the sake of educating the people. You should perform your work. To show the example, very important. Prabhupada always used to tell us, he said, example speaks louder than precept. Precept means you simply tell people to do something, but you don't show the example. I remember as a schoolboy, teachers would say, don't smoke, it's very bad. But we all knew the teacher smokes. <laughs> so the teacher doesn't set the example. 
He's saying don't smoke, but he smokes. So there has to, not just simply giving instruction, but there has to be the example. You have to, you have to show that. Then you can teach the people when they see the good example. Someone please read this. Madhuji, please read. Can I read much? Yes, please. Sak uh, Varnashram Dharma is an example. Sakta Karmani Avidvam Show Yatha Kurvanti Bharata Kuryad Vidvam Stathas Shaktas Chikir Shurloka Sangraham as the ignorant perform their duties with attachment to results, the learned may similarly act but without attachment for the sake of leading the people on the right path. Bhagavad Gita 3.25 So what's the point here in this verse? Karma Yoga Maharaj, uh, it is saying that ignorant people perform duties with attachments to results and it is important to follow Varnashram Dharma and preach uh, Karma Yoga. Yes, right. And we, we, we don't want to disturb the minds of these people. We don't want to agitate them by saying, oh, this is, you're not good, you should do it like this. All right. Would you like to read this verse also, Madhuji? Yes, Maharaj. Name parthasti karyatvam trishu loke shukinchana nana vaptam avaptavyam varta eva chakarmani. O son of Pratha, there is no work prescribed for me within all the three planetary systems, nor am I in want of anything, nor have I a need to obtain anything, and yet I am engaged in prescribed duties. So, what's happening here? Krishna is giving himself as an example. Does Krishna need to do anything? He said, no, I'm not in need of anything. I don't need to obtain anything. Krishna is the, the Supreme Lord. He's Maheshwar. He's the proprietor of all the, all the universes, everything belongs to him. Doesn't need anything. Doesn't need to work. Just like Prabhu, Prabhupada was in Detroit, I heard this story. Prabhupada went to Detroit and he was with Ambarish Ford. Ambarish Ford well, was driving the car and Prabhupada was in the car with some sannyasis. And he happened to drive past some building which was the Ford Motor Company. And so, I think it was Brahmananda, one of the senior Prabhupada disciples, he said to Ambarish, he said, Oh, is, is, is that where you work? <laughs> because he knew Ambarish Ford, you know, it's a family business. So he said to him, is that where you work? And Prabhupada said, he doesn't work, he is the proprietor. <laughs> Right? And so here also Lord Krishna is saying, I don't need to do anything, but he would do it for the sake of example, to show the example. And yet I am engaged in prescribed duties. And there's a reason for that, and of course the reason will be explained. Yeah. Somebody like to read? Prabhu? Some Prabhu can read? Yes, go although ahead. Such, although such rules and regulations are for the conditioned soul and not Lord Krishna, because he descended to establish the principle of religion, he followed the prescribed rules. Otherwise, Common man would follow in his footsteps because he is the greatest authority. Papa 3.22 People would follow Krishna's example. If Krishna didn't work, nobody would work. 
just like when Buddhism was spread in India. No. Did the Buddha work? No, the Buddhists, they, they don't work, they would just sit and do nothing, sit and meditate. And so everybody, what happened, everybody began to meditate. When the country was Buddhist, there was a terrible time. There was no farming going on. Everybody was just sitting, meditating. They said, I don't have to meditate, I have to meditate. And no work was done. Nothing was grown. The land was not cultivated. So there was a problem. And that's one of the reasons why Buddhism was driven out of India. All right. We need someone else to read. For a second, please. Please. Now, Kuriyama Karma Chedaham Sankar Sankar Shyacha Kartasham. If I did not perform prescribed duties, all this world would be put to ruination. I would be the cause of creating unwanted population. Bhagavad Gita 3.24. So, can you see the connection here? Previously, Arjuna said, if I fight, I will be the cause of creating unwanted population. But now Krishna is saying, if, if I don't fight, if you don't fight, that's going to be the cause of creating unwanted population. If you don't do your duty, then all the worlds will be ruined. All the, there will be no good coming in the, in the world. Nobody's going to do their duty. And the result will be unwanted population. So just the reverse from what Arjuna was saying. Arjuna was arguing, if I fight, people die, they'll get unwanted population. Krishna said, if you don't fight, if you don't do your duty, then it will create the real problem. So, Arjuna's arguments have been defeated. Right? Someone like to read this verse? Nice. Yes, yes. Whatever action a great man performs, common men follow, and whatever standards he sets by the exemplary acts, all the world pursues. This is, a, this is a verse often quoted. Usually we find it in obituaries, you know, when, someone, when some big businessman leaves the world, they may put his picture in the newspaper and then they will put this verse below his picture, that he was a great man, he set standards for people. <laughs> so, uh, Shrista, Shrista, Shrista means a respected person. And whatever he does, whatever standards he set, people follow. And we see this principle in the advertising industry. You know, you'll see the, the Indian cricket team, they wear this kind of shoe, or they use this kind of shirt or something. And then all oh, people will think, oh, they use it, I should also, this is good, I must get it. Or this, this famous movie star, she uses this shampoo to wash her hair. So all the people will go and buy the same shampoo to wash their hair. Like that, we'll, we like to follow great people. Common people, they want to follow great people. Of course, the point is we should know who is actually great. We consider the great souls to be the Mahajans. But today, who is a great soul? Well, it's a, either a movie star or a sportsman or a politician or something. But they, they set standards and it influences people. So this is 
what we call in our spiritual teachings the acharya. Acharya meaning one who teaches by his example, the ideal teacher. Just like the acharya doesn't just simply tell people to chant Hare Krishna, he also chants Hare Krishna. He's chanting and he's telling other people to chant. He studies the Bhagavad Gita and he tells other people study Bhagavad Gita. So a little exercise for you. We would like you to take a partner. How many people do we have here today? How many people are in the chat? 18. Okay, so 19. You may get a partner and then discuss an incident where others followed your example. And then what was the result? for those who followed your example. And if I want to join a group, how do I go about it? Uh, just, uh, you cancel that my red cross about this. Where? Here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, before you was used to go to the room. Oh, yeah. Which one is it? More oh, from there. Option should come. It is not coming.
right from there you used to go to this breakout room earlier yeah i used to usually it used to be an icon it used to be one of the things up here but it's not there now Co-host still it is not coming. <laughs> anyway, okay, I think we, we don't need a lot of time to discuss this. I'll give them a few more minutes. Did you put three people in groups? Three groups, three people in a group? Yes, we have you know, some we need to, you know, use only one laptop. Oh, so I see, I yeah. use only one laptop. I think we can close the, the meeting. Which one is it? I closed it when I found it. Did you? Yeah. Oh, you closed it from there. Are we recording this? Yes, sir. Okay. So they'll be back in a minute, is it? Hare Krishna, everyone back? No? Hmm? Now everyone's back, eh? Hare Krishna. So can, would someone like to share what you discussed? Did you have an incident where others followed your example? Hare Krishna Maharaj, I can share. Yes, please. A um, friend of mine uh, was having, she said that she was having difficulty finishing her 16 rounds. And uh, I told her that um, I get up early, you know, at, then when you get up at 4.30 or latest by 4.30, then you can finish 16 rounds even more before, you know, 7 o'clock. And then she says she liked the idea, she tried and it was good, it worked. So she followed. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, okay, very good. That's a very nice example. Someone else? Hare Krishna Maharaj, that the pranam. Hare um, Krishna. Uh, actually, Maharaj, we are having the Hare Krishna. Um, actually, we are having the dating group here in our congregation, and uh, that group is for youth girl. And uh, uh, one student knows that there is uh, 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 for uh, for dating small I and them that so join. They registered. And 
pieces i think um, we did to nine books and we also done for and now they are starting to something wrong with your microphone i think mataji some problem it's not your voice is not so clear i couldn't understand everything you were saying i heard at the beginning that you're something about a reading group but then i don't know what you were saying did anybody else catch it i Prabhu, did you get it, Prabhu? Yes, uh, Mataji was saying that uh, some they completed somewhere around nine books, Maharaj. Oh, reading nine books together. Eh? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, very nice, very good. Yes, this has become quite common around the world. The devotees meet together and read the book. Very good. Of course, we want to go and not just only read the book. We have to explain and discuss what's in the book. Prabhupada said that's even more important than just reading. People may read, it becomes just a reading exercise, but if they have to explain what they read and what, they're just, what they've been hearing, then it's more of a challenge. So we encourage like that. Then we we'll just like to hear a couple more people, what you discussed, an incident, someone else? Hare Krishna Maharaj, I can speak. Please. Uh, so we have two examples, Maharaj. Uh, one example is that of my late father. Uh, he, when we became Krishna conscious or become devotees, uh, he was not much in favor of it. But uh, when, when we visited India and we went on pilgrimage, he came with us. And after watching us you know, like going through different Mayapur and Vrindavan and different places, uh, he became, he started to chant Maharaj. And he started to chant 16 rounds, and he chanted 16 rounds till he passed away a few years back. So that was one example, Maharaj. Another example was uh, my wife's brother. He came to Canada after us, and uh, just watching us, he also become a devotee. He started following us, and then he is right now an initiated devotee. Wonderful. No, oh, very nice. Very good. Now these are all good examples. Of course, we do see people do bad things, and it has a similar effect. Anybody like to share an incident where they were doing something which was not very good? Where people followed? Hare Krishna Maharaj, I would like to share my experience. Please? Yeah, as I have two children, eight years and six years, Maharaj. Usually, I don't watch movies or anything, but uh, some months back I was watching a Krishna movie because in order to understand the one Leela, that, that was a very old South Indian Telugu movie. So as I was looking at it and the children got little, little uh, relaxed in that sense, okay, father is watching movies, now we are allowed to watch movies as well. Then slowly it became a habit, you know, when I was not at home, <laughs> and then sooner or later it became the habit that comes to watching other movies. So then I had to, you know, put some extra endeavor to stop them to not to watch uh, um, the general movies, you know, the recent movies, whatever. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good, yes. And a little leniency and <laughs> creates a big problem. Thank you, Prabhu. Very nice example. Sometimes. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, I, I was thinking of two good examples, but since you talk about, uh, mention about you know, the negative examples, my two sons. As you could see, Rev. Janardan and Krishna, they're part of this group also. Whenever I get on the phone to talk to my sister or any relative or, or devotee, they would seek their opportunity also 
at that time when I'm busy, to use their phone also to get on the internet and do whatever they want. So they're following my bad example sometimes. <laughs> you try to restrict them on using their phones, yeah? Yeah, definitely it becomes, they're very contagious. I see also devotees sometimes, they, one devotee I know, he was, had a job in a shop and he had a handphone and he told me he spends most of the day just playing some computer game on the handphone. So I said, you know, that's very sad and because he was a, an initiated devotee, quite a few years, a long time in the movement but he allowed himself to get in, into this habit and he regretted it himself. But it's difficult to give up. Once you start these things, it's hard to give up. Think habits like smoking, drinking, they're also very easy to begin. You get drawn into doing them, very hard to give them up. So the Acharya, it has to show the right example to devotees, to people, and understand the importance of his own example. So, Lord Krishna, oh, we, well, here's a quote, we can read this one. Lord Chaitanya said that a teacher should behave properly before he begins teaching. One who teaches in that way is called Acharya or the ideal teacher. Chapter 3, text 21, purport. So, I have to show the right, you want to teach, first you have to behave properly. So often devotees, sometimes, you know, they like to tell other devotees what to do, but without, without showing the right example themselves, they have no right to try to instruct others. And without having that position, without being authorized as a teacher or as an authority, then it's not a good idea to try to instruct others. It will create problems. You have to be careful before you try to guide other people. All right. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, like this, this statement of Lord Chaitanya, it says that before we start teaching, one has to, you know, behave properly and behave accordingly. Now, uh, oftentimes we have seen that like people sitting on Vyasasan, they are also not really following in their lives what they are preaching at that point from the Vyasasan. But, uh, on the other hand, isn't it that like we are just repeating what our previous Acharyas are saying? So should we be restricting ourselves from preaching if we are not really being the perfect example or we should just continue preaching although we are not perfect? Well, certainly it's not a good idea to be sitting on the Vyasa sun if we're not following strictly, just like people may worship the deity. If one is going on the altar, but he's not following strictly the regulated principles, then he has no right to worship the deity. And sometimes we have had instance, instances where there were reactions if somebody is not following strictly that sometimes the, the deity is damaged or something. And so it's, an ind it's a sign to us that somebody is not following strictly. So it's, it's very important that the, the teacher has to show the right example and he has, he has to teach, of course he has to preach according to his own realization. Now he may not be perfect in Krishna consciousness, he may not have complete realization, but he still has to be following, he has to be practicing the principles. Not, I've never heard of people sitting on the Vyasasans 
who were not followed. Well, of course, we have had incidents, incident, incidents in our movement. But, you know, when somebody, somebody's not following, then Krishna arranges to remove them. Krishna arranges to take them out. Yes, Maharaj. So my point was like basically I, I you know like I mean they are not that it's not that they are not following the regulative principles or the basic uh, necessities that is required but sometimes they say they are preaching about not gossiping or you know like not doing pracharpa and, and, and we know that like that particular devotee is actually doing that thing in, 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 his, in his or her practical life then you know like I mean that is is that a right thing to do or we should, that person shouldn't be doing that? Well, yeah, he shouldn't really be doing that. Maybe he's preaching to himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of seeing it. You know, the person is talking about you shouldn't do prajal, but maybe he's trying to preach to himself, to get himself out of these habits. Sometimes it has to be like that. We have, we have to convince ourselves that what we're doing is not right. And that sometimes helps us, you know, you, when, they, when they speak about it, become more cautious that I have to stop this myself. Prabhupada told, the, there was an example about the, uh, the young boy, the mother took her son to the doctor and she told the doctor, uh, I want my son to stop eating sweets. He eats too many sweets. Could you tell him please not to eat so many sweets? So the doctor said, well, can you come back after two weeks? So the lady went away and came back two weeks later. And two weeks later she brought the boy and the doctor said to the boy, you should not eat many, so many sweets, it's not good for you. So the lady said to the doctor, why did you wait two weeks? He said, well, when you came two weeks ago I was eating many sweets. So I thought before I tried to tell your son, I have to be able to not eat too many sweets myself. If I'm eating many sweets, then my instructions will not be good. So it's like that, you know, we should properly, we should follow, we're preaching something, we should be an example of that ourselves. And so somebody's speaking prajalpa, yeah, you should definitely, you should be cautious about that not to speak prajapa himself. Otherwise, that kind of preaching is not effective. It's not really effective. It, it, it's in, everybody knows he's speaking so much prajapa, he's telling us not to talk prajapa. So it's not effective preaching. Maybe he's convincing himself, I don't know. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Would somebody like to read this, please, again? It's 321 per poor. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, may I? Please. Acharya, the ideal teacher, the king or the executive head of a state, the father and the school teacher are all considered to be natural leaders of the innocent people in general. All such natural leaders have a great responsibility to their dependents. 3.21 per poor. Right? So three people mentioned the head of the state or the king, then the father, the school teacher, they're leaders. And they set the standards for other people. Prabhupada, when Prabhupada was here, at one point he, he was uh, to meet with Indira Gandhi, and he did meet Indira Gandhi, but one of the points which he wanted to impress upon Indira Gandhi she was the Prime Minister of India at the time and one of the points he wanted to impress on her was he wanted that all the uh, members of parliament in the Indian government, he said they should all be twice initiated brahmanas and they should all follow four regulated principles. He said this was a necessity for all the politicians in the government, that they should show that responsibility. They should be strict. Maharaj, uh, I have a question. Yes. For the previous uh, 
this one should not become a king and father, the guru, unless one is, uh, one is not able to deliver their dependence. Uh, Maharaj, is that also involves to the king or a father as a guru uh, or a guru to the, the karma also involves like you know, one, one's get the karma not able to deliver their dependence. What could be the consequences if that is not happens? Uh, what could be the consequences? <laughs> yeah, you get karma, right. You're going to get karma because you brought a child into the world and if you bring him up not to be a devotee, if he has sin, then certainly you have to take some reactions for that. And so it's the duty of the father to teach, the, teach his child, to try to train them and give them Krishna consciousness. Now Srila Prabhupada had children, Prabhupada had three sons. And, you know, the, the youngest one, the youngest one was called Vrindavan. And, you know, he, he's, he's not, not unfavorable, but he's not, you know, like a fired up devotee, you know. He, and sometimes he may come to visit. But uh, Prabhupada, as a, as a married man in household life, Srila Prabhupada would bring his children to the temple. He'd bring them to the temple and he tried his best to give them Krishna consciousness. And then at a certain point, of course, the children grow up and then they're on their own. Then the father is no longer responsible. But while the children are young, it's the duty of the father to do his best to try to instill in them the good qualities. Particularly training them, you know, what food they should eat, not to take intoxication, no sinful activities. But once they grow up, then the father is no longer responsible. So you don't get karma after, after a certain point, you know, once the child grown up, then he's on his own, he stands on his own feet, he makes his own decisions. Then you're not responsible. But while they're young children, and certainly, you know, you bring them into the world, you have a duty, you have a responsibility. And what they do later in life, it will, have, it will be based a lot on what they learn as children. What we learn as children, we never forget. So it's important. The childhood is very important. Prahlad Maharaj said, Komar Acharit Pragno Dharmam Bhagavatami. From the beginning of life, from this stage of Kumar, one should learn what is Bhagavad Dharma. But karma is a very complicated thing. We have a lot of karma from many different places. Husband and wife, they share each other's karma, and the children come. There's also, you could see also karma there, and how we educate them, how we train them, and so on. And very complicated. So not easy to understand exactly what's due to our karma. The best thing is try to surrender to Krishna and depend on Krishna. Okay. Thank you. Someone like to read this? Please. Uh, there must be a first class man. So there must be one class of man, first class man, ideal, that people will learn that here is an ideal class of man that will try to imitate or follow that. But there is no ideal man now, at the present moment. Everyone is a Shudra, Kalao Shudra Sambhava. Then how the society will be happy? It is not possible because there is no ideal man. Hmm. Wait, the um, second part. Yes. So, here Krishna says that we should create, we should educate a section of men who are by Brahman, by Guna and Karma and not by birth, then society will be happy. So our, this Krishna consciousness movement is that for the time being, we are trying to create section of men 
भगवत गीता 18.45 दर्वन अक्टूबर 11 1975 so you can understand something about Sri Prabhupada's mission that he wants to create people who will be the good example for others the birth is not important but the guna and the karma are important so krishna consciousness is to try to improve the nature of the world the situation of the world make people happy <laughs> when we have people of good character then people will be happy we hope <laughs> So first class man, but everywhere. Oh, Prabhupada was giving the lecture. He was in Sweden, and he was in Sweden, and it was a, a time when there was a lot of student re revolution, a lot of rebellion among the students. So Prabhupada was in Sweden, and he was lecturing about Varnashram. And he was lecturing about the importance of creating first first class men. And he said, "We want to create first class men." So some student was there listening, and he said to Prabhupada after at the end of the, he said, he said to Prabhupada, he said, "So you are saying that you are first class and we are all fourth class." Because Prabhupada was talking about how modern society is just sudras, all sudra, all fourth class men. And so the student was challenging Prabhupada. He said that you, so you are first class, and we are all fourth class. Is that what you're saying? So then Prabhupada said to the student, he said, he said, no, no. He said, actually, I am fifth class because I have come here to serve all of you. I am your servant. I've come here to serve you. I am fifth class. <laughs> so it was a really amazing, wonderful reply. It was so humble, Prabhupada expressing his humility in front of these students. But at the same time, Prabhupada confirmed that, you know, these students, that their mood was just fourth class, that they were actually fourth class. And Prabhupada was very humbly describing himself as fifth class, because I've come to serve all of you. Okay. So we'll go ahead. Yes, somebody read. Maharaj, can I? Please. Um, through furtive activities and sense gratification, regulated by the Vedic rituals, one is gradually elevated to Krishna consciousness. Therefore, a realized soul in Krishna consciousness should not disturb others in their activities or understanding. But he should act by showing how the results of all work can be dedicated to Krishna. 3.26 So what is the point being made here? Um, one should regulate the sense gratification and give the fruit of activities um, in order to gradually elevate it to Krishna consciousness. Really? Is that right? Is that how we get Krishna consciousness? We should give up. Uh, if we are entangled in a sense gratification, then we cannot uh, come to the Krishna consciousness. Well, the statement says one is gradually elevated to Krishna consciousness. In other words, you may have, you may regulate your sense gratification. So, 
will take a long time, gra very gradually, one may come to Krishna consciousness. Because you're following Vedic rituals, so it's going to take a very long time. However, a realized soul in Krishna consciousness should not disturb others in their activities or understanding. But he should act by showing how the results of all work can be dedicated, dedicated to Krishna. So, this, this second section of the paragraph here is describing the devotee, a person in Krishna consciousness. So, he's detached. A devotee is not attached. A devotee is detached from the work. He will do whatever is required and he's not attached to the result. But he, he won't, he should not disturb others. He sees other people not serving, not doing things properly. He shouldn't, he shouldn't get worried about them and start giving them trouble and telling them you're wrong, you shouldn't do this, this is not right. But he should simply show the results of his work de dedicated to Krishna. Just like the first part is described Vedic rituals, one can be gradually... So we don't want to encourage that. But if we work in Krishna consciousness, then and dedicate the results to Krishna, that will be more effective. This first section, this is describing the attached. People are attached, attached to sense gratification. They're attached to doing these Vedic rituals and they want to enjoy the results. But a devotee in Krishna consciousness, he will show the example of just dedicating everything to Krishna. So, the title above, Detached Attitude to the Attached. Here is a detached, the bottom half of the section here is the detached person. And the top part describes the attached person. They're attached to their sense gratification, to their Vedic rituals, but a devotee just simply offer everything, dedicate everything, all the work to Krishna. Someone please read. Please. Vivaha Gyatya, the marriage ceremony is meant to regulate the human mind so that it may become peaceful for spiritual advancement. For most men, this Vivaha Yagya should be encouraged even by persons in the renounced order of life. Sannyasis should never associate with women, but that doesn't mean that one who is, the lower, who is in the lower stages of life, a young man, should not accept a wife in the marriage ceremony, 18.5 per word. Mm. Yes, uh, there's a pastime. Srila Prabhupada was walking one morning with the devotees. And on Prabhupada's morning walk, he had some of his sannyasis with him. And so in Prabhupada's time, these sannyasis were young men. They were not very old, they were young men, in twenties, early thirties. So they were talking, one of the sannyasis said to Prabhupada, he asked Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, you know that story about Shakshi Gopal, the witness deity? And the young man was promised to get the old man's daughter in marriage. But the young man was poor and the old man was wealthy. And Prabhupada said, yes. He said, yes, I remember that story. And so the sannyasi said, to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, I cannot understand. He said, this young man was such a pure devotee, he could talk to Krishna. 
he could go to the temple and talk to Krishna because, you know, they, the family, the rich man's family were objecting. They said, we don't believe that our father said that. And the young man said, no, the deity said it. The, I, he said it in front of the deity. So then the family said to him, then go and bring the deity. If the deity is witness, bring the deity here, then we will believe you. So the young man went all the way back to Vrindavan and he went to the temple where the, young, where the old man had promised that you can marry my daughter. So the young man said to the deity that they, they don't believe me that the old man promised his daughter to me in marriage. You're the only witness. You have to come with me as a witness. So the deity said, how can I come? I'm only a deity. So the young man said, well, if you can talk, why cannot you walk? You should also be able to walk. So Prabhupada said the deity was defeated. So the deity agreed that he would follow the young man and he would go all the way back to the young man's village. So the sannyasi was saying to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, this young man was so pure that he could speak to the deity and he could get the deity to walk and the deity followed him all the way from the temple to his village. He said, why would he want to get married? He said, I can't understand why he would want to get married. And Prabhupada looked at the sannyasi and said, he said, because you cannot get married, you think nobody should get married? <laughs> and then Prabhupada said to him, he said, no, no woman would have anything to do with you. Therefore, you think nobody should get married. <laughs> uh, it was very amusing. Everybody was laughing so much. Prabhupada was laughing, the sannyasis were all laughing. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, the point is, young men, the young men, generally, young men should get married. Sometimes Prabhupada would say things like, uh, and you know, one time in the temple, there was a big temple with many devotees, many young people, and Prabhupada would say, all you women have to get married. And then he looked at all the men and said, and all you men, you have to stay single. So everyone laughed. <laughs> everyone knew it could never happen. But anyway, Prabhupada said like that. So here, sannyasis, sannyasis, usually sannyasis are older men, old men, right? Old age. Sannyasi means a dead man, socially dead. Usually it's for older men, it's not for young men. So they, they, should in, they should not discourage young men. Young men, they want to get married, they should be encouraged. Take a wife and live in Krishna consciousness. So that's the duty of sannyasis. They don't associate with women, but they shouldn't stop young men if a young man wants to get married, he should be encouraged. Of course, he should be responsible. He should be able to look after a wife and he should be able to give proper protection to the wife. He has to be a qualified man. That is the main point. And that's one of the problems which sometimes face people. I was giving another class and another one of the men, men there complained that Oh, the women nowadays, they want a man to be so rich, you have to have so much money. So I said, well, the women are practical, they, they want somebody who is able to protect them. And you know, if you're going to protect them, you have to be able to provide for them. And during the marriage ceremony, they actually do part of the ceremonies like that where they will offer cloth and so many things to the wife. And the idea is to show that the man is able to provide for the lady and to look after them. So, these are some points. Again, it's the, the detached attitude, the detached attitude of the sannyasi to the attached, the attached, the young man. 
young man, you should be encouraged. Okay, you, you're qualified, you have a good job, you have money, you can look after a woman, you have no bad habit. You should get married, take responsibility. Tamal Krishna Goswami used to encourage men who were single that they should take some responsibility. And he considered it was a responsibility for them to take a wife and be married and take care of a wife, look after, maintain a family. It's a responsibility. So, yeah, any comments on this? Yeah, Maharaj, I have a question. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, uh, if the women are very practical and then uh, intelligence, they have a better intelligence than man. And how is it possible that man is not able to share any of their karma? I heard like uh, it goes the other way. The husband uh, karma goes to the women or the wife. Uh, so it's not really works the vice versa. Not from the wife to husband. Oh no, uh, kar the karma goes both ways. They share their karma. They enjoy and suffer the results of each other's pious and sinful activities. Okay, because I, I read elsewhere, Maharaj, in Srimad Bhagavata, one of the Prabhupada talkers, uh, the man always shares his karma to wife and children, but not the wife's karma 100% goes to the children, but not to the husband. But the man shares the bad karma of the women, or something like that. Well, of course, that's written, that's, in the past, be more like that, because the woman was more sheltered and protected in the home. The, the difficulty nowadays is that women are all going out to work. They're not protected the same as they were before. The women, when the woman's at home, then she's not going to be getting any real karma. There won't be that problem. But once they start going out to work and they're earning and mixing with people and, and like that, then there is going to be karma. Anyway, as I said, karma is a, it's a very complex thing. You know, it's hard to understand exactly who is responsible for what, where it comes from, you know, in, the, in the country. The, 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 the heads of state, they also take karma for everyone. And, but we see that sometimes the heads of state, they're sinful themselves and they bring bad karma on the country. There was one president of the USA and he had a cattle ranch and he was killing every day many cows. And so long as he was a president of USA, the USA was involved in war in Vietnam and many, many Americans were being injured and killed in Vietnam. And ultimately they had to pull out of Vietnam and they lost there. But the reason, one of the, the main reasons was the head of the country was a big cattle rancher. He was killing everyday cows, many, many cows. And that's the reaction which came on the country. The whole country suffered. At least Prabhupada explained like that to us, told us. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. We'll go ahead. All right, some please read this. Maharaj I can read Maharaj Okay, go ahead then Prabhu, read. So, so far we are concerned, Krishna conscious, so long our body concept of life is not completely eradicated, we must follow the Swadharma of the body, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, but when actually advance, that is Mahabharata. A bit more? We should not imitate that, but our process is, the more we advance in Krishna Consciousness, we become transcendental to this bodily concept of life. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. 
Bhagavad Gita 2.31, Randam, September 1, 1971. Right. Right. We're, we're may not be Mahabhagavats. We're not the Mahabhagavat, right? Mentioned here. When one actually advanced, that is Mahabhagavat. All right. We're not Mahabhagavatas. But still, the more we advance, we become transcendental to this idea, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra. These material designations, we respect them, but it's, it's a material. We, we, we practice Daivi Varnashram. Daivi Varnashram is we'll do whatever is required for the service of Krishna. Sometimes, you know, people who are a Brahmana, they think, I'm a Brahmana, I don't clean. I don't clean any. No, Brahmana will also clean. He cannot leave a place dirty. Brahman has to clean it. If, if he sees something dirty, he has to clean it. Prabhupada said, just like base plus acid will give salt plus water. Chemical, basic chemical expression, equation. So he said, a Brahmana in context a dirty place, he must clean it. He cannot leave it dirty. He cannot say, I never made the mess. No, he has to clean it. So, these designations are, we don't discriminate against people on these basis. We're all servants of Krishna. One time devotees asked Prabhupada, can we designate devotees as Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra? Prabhupada said, no, we're all servants of Krishna. That is the point. We're all transcendent, we're all Krishna Das. Yes? Someone read? Yes, Mariji? That is required. Daiva Varnashrama Dharma. There must be the four divisions. In the social order of the present day, there is no Brahmana, no Kshatriya. Only there are some few Vaishyas and Shudras. So therefore, there is chaos all over the world. Right, it's true, right? There's no Brahmanas, there's no real Brahmanas, no real Kshatriyas. But we, we do have a few Vaishyas and we have a lot of Sutras. So chaos. Go ahead. So this Krishna Consciousness Movement is meant for creating some real Brahmana. At least there may be help. So there is need of some Brahmana who can give advice to the people who live how to become God conscious, how to become happy. There is a great need of this movement. Bhagavad Gita 2.2 to 6 and about December 11, 1970. So there, there, there must be a head, right? The head in the social body, the Brahmana is the head. If you just have the Vaishya and the Sudra, then that's the belly and the legs. There's no head, there's no arms. So it's not a good, not a healthy situation. So Prabhupada explained, now is a, an emergency situation. The emergency situation is no Brahmanas. So the opportunity is given to everyone. Even hardly we're qualified. We, he gives everyone the chance to become Brahmana. Don't think because you got Brahmana initiation you are Brahman. It's an opportunity to become Brahmana to become qualified. Yes, somebody please read this. Yay Maharaji. Please. Svakarmana tam abhyacharya in siddhim dinda demon vaha. By worshipping of the Lord, a man can attain perfection through performing his own work. Bhagavad Gita 18.46 We do our own work. It doesn't matter if we are Sudra, it doesn't matter what work we do. You may be Brahmana, you may be Sudra, but you do our work. And at the same time, we worship of the Lord. And this way we can get perfection. So we see in the picture, a nice example, Lord Krishna, when he had come from Vrindavan to Mathura, he met with the Sudama, the florist, 
and he gave him Sudama immediately gave Krishna and Balaram so many garlands, flowers, and Lord Krishna blessed Sudama. So we get perfection by doing our own work, not by doing someone else's work. Someone read this one? Yes? Who hasn't read? Krishna, um, I mean, from the book? Yes. I haven't read. So read. Archana. Archana, are you there? Yes, no, Rev. You read. Okay, I can't find. Um, why a sutra artificially should be a brahmana? Let them let him remain a sutra, and if he follow strictly the rule and regulation of sutra, he will also be as good as a brahmana, even if he remains a sutra and does accordingly, he will get the same position as devotee. Swa karmana. Tam Bayashya Sam. He will get the perfection. Right. Prabhupada. So Prabhupada is quoting this verse again from the 18th chapter. It was just quoted here, 1846. A man attains perfection through performing his own work by worship of the Lord. And by. So, Sudra. He does his work and he does it. He gets perfection. He's as good as a Brahmana. We don't discriminate. Krishna sees everyone equally. Somebody is on the altar offering arti and someone's cleaning the temple. Krishna does not make distinction between who's good and who's bad. He sees everyone, they're devotees, they're doing service. So that is perfection. Right? Archana, read more. Uh, for being, a, for the big rascal, this big, is the... Big scale, for the big scale. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, for the big scale, this is the required. Uh, in big scale, you cannot make all of them as brahmanas or sannyasi. No, that is not possible. If you want to make the whole human society perfect, then this Krishna consciousness movement should be in, introduced according to the Krishna instruction. Right. Wait, there's a bit more. We uh, have to introduce this uh, Varna Sham Dharma. Now we are pink, picking up some of them. Best is uh, best. That is another thing. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, para upakara. Why a certain section uh, should be picked pick up, the, the whole mass of people will get the benefit of it. Then it is re required systematic. Then we have to introduce this uh, Varnasham Dharma. It must be done perfectly and it is pos possible and people will be happy. All right, so Prabhupada is making the point here. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Para Upakar, Bharata Bhumi Tehaila Manusya Janma Janma Sartaka Karikara, Para upakar, 
Para upakarm means for the benefit of others. To benefit others. So Prabhupada was saying, why only a few people? Everyone should get the opportunity. So that's why Varnashram Dharma is important. Give everybody a chance. Not just some few people who can be Brahmana. We say, sometimes we say, oh, Krishna consciousness movements for Brahmanas, right? Like here. You cannot make all of them Brahmanas or sannyasis. No way. Not possible. But give everybody a chance to do some service for Krishna. So this is Varnashram. This is the, the big scale. Hmm? We want to give everyone an opportunity. So we have to introduce this Varnashram. When Prabhupada heard people were leaving Krishna consciousness and giving up Krishna, he said, we have to introduce Varnashram Dharma. He said, because they're not brahmanas or sannyasis, and they think I have no place in Krishna consciousness. But Krishna consciousness is not just for brahmanas and sannyasis. For everyone, according to their qualification, let them come and do some service for Krishna. It doesn't matter what they do, let everyone be engaged in Krishna consciousness. It's not just only Brahma, for brahmanas and sannyasis. All right, so we covered. These are the lessons we've been covering. This, that's the last lesson of Unit 1. Tomorrow we'll go on to Unit 2. Final quote by Prabhupada. Everyone is there, in the, everything is there in the authoritative scripture. If we take advantage of these books, we are looking, we are taking so much labor to present. You can understand the science of Krishna very perfectly and your life becomes successful. From Los Angeles, December 14, 11, 1973. Okay, so now we have some exercise for you. We've finished that. I want you to look at your questions, right? We have questions on chapter 2. So, question number 49. Number 49. Summarize main philosophical points on Atma Tattva, the science of the soul, from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, 11 to 30, with reference to at least four key verses and three analogies cited in Srila Prabhupada's purports. Right? So, we have our groups. Oh, can we go back to those groups again? Huh? Group of two people. Whatever they were in this, like this morning, what you have. Can be three people also. How many groups did we have? Nine. Oh, we don't need so many groups. Six, six groups, I don't know. Can you repeat what we have to do? I'm just... Yes. I'm using the the uh, the Purva Swajayaya, preliminary self-study. You know the questions on each chapter. So questions on chapter 2, number 49. Question number 49. Summarize the main philosophical points on Atma Tattva, the science of the soul, from Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 2, text number 11 to 30, with reference to at least four key verses and three analogies cited in Srila Prabhupada's purports. Right? That's for one, that's for the groups one, two, and three. Right? 
Have you, have, did you put everybody in the group? Yes, uh, six, six groups. We have created. Yeah. So group group one, two, and three will do this question, and group four, five, and six, I want you to do question number fifty. Summarize Krishna's instructions to Arjuna on Karma Kanda, found in Bhagavad Gita, chapter two, verses thirty-one to thirty-seven. How are these instructions different? from Krishna's subsequent instructions in chapter 2. Right? You have 15 minutes. Try to do it in 10 minutes. Is it clear? Yes, Maharaj, is clear. So group one, two, and three, your question is on the soul, text number 21 to 30. And group four, five, and six, your question is on Karmakanda, 31 to 37, chapter 2. Summarize Krishna's instructions and how are these instructions different from Krishna's subsequent instructions? I don't know how I can get into the rooms to hear what they're talking about. I don't see how I can do it at home. Huh? Oh, breakout room. Uh, yeah, breakout room. When you close the PowerPoint, then. This is only the rooms. 
Well, this is breakout room here. Breakout rooms, but when I click it, it doesn't open. You can do with my phone. You can do with your phone? Yes. I can go into other groups with your phone? Yes. Just let me know in which group you want to be. I will change from here. Okay. okay. This so is basically, group, group um, Mataji, till now we have taken already four shlokas. 2.12, 2.13, 2.17 and 2.20. Uh, so uh, in that uh, we have got around four, four points. Like... Uh, uh, Did you get your three analogies? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Did you get your three analogies? Did you pick out some analogies? Krishna, Hare Krishna, Radhika Mahaprabhu Mataji, I am audible. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Yes, yes Hare Krishna Maharaj. Did, did, did you pick up? Did you pick out three analogies? Have you got three analogies?
principle of the material body. It is the basic principle of the material body. And the influence of such a spiritual spark is spread all over the body. Just like how uh, influence of an active principle of medicine spreads throughout the body. Okay. Yeah. So these are the two we have come up with till now, Maharaj. Okay, we'll give you two more minutes to finish off. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, are you ready? No, Maharaj. No, Maharaj. Well, give you two more minutes. You have to finish off. Other groups ready. Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Are, are you ready? Finish? Hare Krishna, Maharaj. I just asked uh, Agne Prabhu. We cannot, I cannot hear anybody from uh, anyone in my group. They are having some issues with their mind, and we have not been able to do anything. That's what I just asked Agne Prabhu what we should do. Yeah, they haven't been able to do anything. They should. So it is, it is hard to uh, work with when they can't hear from each other. Yeah, yeah. Okay, are you able to do something on your own? Uh, no problem, uh, Maharaj. I was just uh, trying to find, uh, ask Yage Prabhu and then trying to hear from them. I was just working back and forth. I'm so sorry for myself. Okay, okay. All right, we'll f let's close the groups. Close them? Yeah, yeah, of course. We gotta finish. I'm gonna finish on time. Yeah, I, I was just asking uh, Agni Prabhu what she should do. Did you get my message? No, what was your message? Oh, no, I was ask, asking Yagi Prabhuji about the, the difficulty that we had in our group. I was asking him what we should do. I felt so sorry. I replied. You've replied? I replied with all Okay. So everyone's back? Are everyone's back, yeah? Mm. No. Okay. okay. So group number one. Do you have a spokesman? Hare Krishna Maharaj, and with Pranam. Hare Krishna. Um, so, uh, I will be representing group number one, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Mataji. So, uh, uh, we start with 2.12, the shloka where uh, Krishna starts to speak and he says that uh, never was a time that uh, I, I do not exist, nor do you do not exist, and uh, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So, he, represent, he says that uh, the soul is always existing. And in the future also, it will be existing. So in the next shloka 2.13, as we all know, uh, it is uh, the analogy over here uh, is actually uh, how a soul passes from uh, boyhood to youth, youth uh, to old age, 
similarly uh, the soul actually uh, passes into another body at death so this is the example given so there is nothing to actually be bewildered by the uh, 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 by the uh, decay of the material body so the body uh, 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 the soul actually passes from at old age it passes from this body to another body so uh, the next shloka over here is 2.17 uh, where we um, have that which pervades the entire body you should know to be indestructible no one is able to destroy that imperishable soul so um, here again um, uh, it, uh, the souls um, how the soul is actually imperishable and it actually pervades through our entire body as consciousness is explained and also the size of the soul even though it is very very minute uh, it is actually uh, described in the uh, scriptures that it is one ten thousand part of the tip of our hair. So it is very minute. But even though being so minute, a uh, very important point here mentioned in the purport is this very small spiritual par spark is the basic principle of the material body. So, uh, and the influence of such a spiritual spark is spread all over the body. Um, and an analogy over here is given as example is influence of the active principle of some medicines which spreads throughout the body. So how uh, such a small spark is actually the um, basic principle of the material body and this spark is actually spreading all over our body. Uh, uh, like how a, a medicine which we take, which, which actually goes to all over, uh, spreads through all over our body and uh, uh, makes our body uh, perfect. And 2.20 is, uh, for the soul there is neither birth nor death at any time. He has not come into being, does not come into being, and will not come into being. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing, and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. So here again, um, the different characteristics of the uh, soul have been explained and uh, how he is, does not have any birth or death and he is always there, he is always present, he is ever existing, eternal and he does not get killed or he does not get slain. So here uh, a wonderful uh, analogy which is given uh, here is actually uh, about the sun and the clouds. So when it is a cloudy day, um, um, we all know uh, we cannot see the sun actually but actually uh, we know the presence of sun because of which is daytime and we know that sun is there and there is uh, even though it is cloudy but there is some light similarly uh, uh, one does not find actually we cannot see the soul within the heart uh, and where it is situated and other things but we understand the presence of the soul due to the consciousness in our body due to the activities we, which we are doing and due to the um, uh, 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 we are able to think we are able to do other activities so the presence of the soul is actually uh, um, it's simply by the presence of the consciousness in our body so these are the three analogies we have taken from these four uh, shlokas Maharaj. very nice thank you so much well done thank you. All right, group number two, would you be able to add anything into this? Any points which you've picked up which they didn't include? Group number two? Group number two, who's the spokesman? Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, uh, we were doing a second question as you asked in group two, so we were focusing on that part. You asked to do that one, no? Well, I said group one, two, and three to, to do this question on the soul, right? Sorry, Prabhu, I was in group four. Part Sarthi, Prabhu, we are in group four. Yes, we are, we are in group Sorry, we in, in group two. We were in group two. two. Yes, yes, yes. Maharaj gave the same points, like nothing to add but just... Uh, Nothing to add, eh? Yes. The same points. Okay. And okay, so we'll go on to the second question. Let's hear group number four. Who's the spokesman for group four? Hare Krishna Maharaj uh, I'm speaking on behalf of our group. Yes. So we have come to various points after reading this. Uh, <coughs> 
uh, so we are summarizing on this uh, that uh, as it is mentioned up to uh, text 31 to 37 it is all explained about the karm khan that krishna is explaining uh, karm khan to arjuna that uh, in the first uh, th text 31 uh, krishna is saying that uh, we should follow one should follow his swadharma uh, that uh, to follow his vatashram uh, like in text 32 uh, Krishna is telling about that uh, to Arjuna that uh, he should follow his Kshatriya's duty, that uh, that is to fight. So he should follow that. Uh, in text 33, uh, uh, Krishna is saying to Arjuna that uh, uh, if you don't, if you will not uh, do work, then you will incur sin in result of that, and you will lose your reputation even, and people will speak ill about you. They will dishonor you. They will not respect you, and they will just uh, think that uh, you were a coward person, that's why you didn't fight, uh, and you will lose all your name and fame in that case. And uh, your uh, your enemies will describe uh, bad words about you, and that will be more painful than don't than if you don't fight in that case. It is more painful for a Shatriya if someone speaks bad words about him, uh, if someone called him a coward person. And in the last of this uh, Karm Khan section, <coughs> Krishna explained that uh, in both the cases you will uh, enjoy. It means if you will win this war, then also you will enjoy the uh, king kingdom of this earth. And in case you will uh, die in the war, then you will enjoy the uh, heavenly planets. The doors of heavenly planets will open for you. So there is no worry in that case, both the cases. So after that, explaining the karm Khan part, Lord Krishna came to explain uh, karm yoga part to uh, Arjuna. That up till now he was explaining karm Khan. Now he's explaining the karm yoga. That he is saying that you should fight for the sake of fighting, not incur the. Uh, in that way, you will not incur any kind of sin. So you don't have to worry. You just fight to do your karm and don't think about the results of that part. So. Uh, so uh, Krishna is explaining the knowledge of yoga here, uh, that there is no loss or diminution. <coughs> uh, it will lead to a little advancement and will protect you uh, if you follow this kind of knowledge that I'm sharing with you. That if you just do your karm and don't think about the results of that. Okay, very good. Yeah, very nice. Thank you, Bhamna. Thank you, Babaji. Hare Krishna. Group number five. Can we hear the spokesman? Hare Krishna, good day. It's me. Okay. So actually, it's similar like Mataji has said. Uh, in the beginning, uh, Krishna will ask Arjuna to fight without uh, hesitation because he said you are fighting for uh, the religion principle, so you should go for it. And he will give a different reason. Like if you, even if you lose, you will go you can go to heaven, heavenly door will be open for you. If you win, then you will get the kingdom. And it's your duty to fight. So Krishna is explaining that. And then it's your duty as a duty you should do. Otherwise, you will, uh, you know, if you neglect your duty, that will be sin for you. And yeah, this is the kind of part. And he is explaining and he said uh, doing karma khanda, karma yoga is better than karma sannyas just uh, better than not do, renouncing all the work and just say better you do your work and uh, give the result of the work to me okay yes all right thank you group number six Who is the spokesman? Group number six. Oh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, I will present them for group number six. I uh, will doing the first part, uh, uh. the summary of the verses, and one of the other members will be doing the, the difference between the, okay. the, the subsequent chapter okay. and this. So basically is pretty much what um, Bhavana Mataji has already presented. We are getting the same thing. A warrior's duty is to fight. Uh, neglecting, uh, neglecting um, one's duty will lead to infamy. 
a respectable per for a respectable person, dishonor is worse than death. And we're summarizing, so we're not explaining much here. Therefore, Arjuna, uh, who is Arjuna, uh, should not uh, become weak and not fight. He should perform his duty. It is important that he performs his duty. In any case, if he's killed in the battlefield, he will be enjoying heavenly delights. And if he conquer his enemy, he will enjoy the earthly kingdom. So the difference, the whole point here that we're getting here is that one has to perform his duty. If you do not perform your duty, it leads to infamy, or it leads to sin. Uh, another one of the other members will be presenting their point. Yes, thank you. Yes, second part. Hare Krishna. So Hare Krishna Maharaj, I, we didn't get to finish the second part. I was hoping that during the presentation, uh, one of the other members, Jayanta Prabhu or, or Pure Devi Mataji would have been able to finish that. So I think you're still working on it. We can probably go on to another group if they're, they're finished. I will come back to that. No, there's no, you're the last group. I guess we didn't get to compare the two, uh, the, the subsequent uh, and the pro. <laughs> Uh, well, they can sp tell us what they think, what they've got. It's not a very big question. Very basic. Anyway, Lord Krishna had been teaching, first of all, he was instructing Arjuna in Karmakanda, where one is attached to the results. But then Lord Krishna goes on and speaks about Karma Yoga. And karma yoga is detached from the results. And so just the opposite of what he was teaching in Karma Kanda. He was using Karma Kanda for a little while to explain some point to Arjuna that uh, don't worry, you will enjoy. But then he went on to explain karma yoga. And karma yoga is doing the duty in a detached manner, just the opposite from the Karma Kanda. So it's that simple. That's the main point. Okay, so we will stop here now. Are there any final questions? Anybody? Maharaj, I had a question regarding, um, you know, we spoke about uh, detached attitude to be attached. And we are also in this process and we are not self-realized yet. But sometimes when we also do some action, make mistakes, like how, where, where are we placed then? Like do we also act in a way that people follow our example or sometimes we have to instruct them do this, don't do this as we are preaching. So how, how do we distinguish that? Like when... You mean we, we may make, some, we have some faults ourselves? Yeah, because we are still not like self-realized. We are in the path. We are just beginning our journey. So. I do, like, you know, we hear that Prabhupada also wants us to set an example. We are also, you know, wor working towards that path. So we also end up making mistakes and I just don't know how we can... Well, it, the point is that we, we, we understand we're not perfect, but the knowledge which we have is perfect. The teachings which we have is perfect. I may not be perfect myself, but what I'm saying is perfect, then it's coming from the perfect person. And we're trying to become perfect. We give the example, like the mango fruit is green, but you just leave it and it will become ripened. So, or somebody's, someone's dirty, but they're in the shower. So they're in the shower, you can't criticize them for being dirty because they're in the process of cleaning themselves. Okay, so I have faults, I know I'm not perfect, but I'm on the path, I'm working on it, I'm doing something about my imperfections. That's why I'm in Krishna consciousness, it's helping us to 
become more aware. Self-realization, we get to know more about ourselves. You know, before coming to Krishna consciousness, we were thinking, I'm perfect. We never thought I had any faults. We didn't think about it. But what, after coming to Krishna consciousness, we become a bit more aware of, of our faults and our shortcomings. So that in itself is self-realization. That's good. And we work on it gradually and get rid of these things. So not a big problem. Okay. Hare Krishna. Any other questions? Yes, Maharaj. I have a question. Yes. Um, Maharaj, actually I am confused uh, amongst uh, Buddhi Yoga and uh, Bhakti Yoga. Like in uh, chapter 3.1, in Shloka 3.1 it is mentioned that uh, and the path of realization has been recommended, Buddhi Yoga or Krishna Consciousness. So Krishna Consciousness is Bhakti Yoga, na Maharaj? So here... I'm a bit confused about Buddhi Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Uh -huh. So Buddhi Yoga, we said, is more like Karma Yoga. It's more like working, action. You do your duty, working. Duty performed in a detached manner, using your intelligence. Buddhi is intelligence. So intelligence, we use our intelligence to act according to our prescribed duty. But bhakti yoga, bhakti yoga is essentially based on hearing and chanting, right? Sravanam kirtanam vishnu, smaranam padasevanam, archanam vandanam dasyam, sakyam atmani vedan. These nine things, this is really bhakti yoga. This is what bhakti yoga actually is all about, hearing and chanting. The basis. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes? Chief. Can I understand? No. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh-huh. Thank you. Oh, any other questions? Okay, so we'll meet tomorrow. We're going to go on. We'll study more, chapter 3, and we'll have a look at some also, some things from other 4 and 5 also. So we'll meet you tomorrow. Srila Prabhupada ki. Go back to Vrinda ki. Hare, Hare Krishna.